Good morning. This is a map of Starlink's satellites in the sky right now. These satellites are in low Earth orbit, or LEO. Starlink is part of SpaceX, which is one of Elon Musk's companies. The constellation of Starlink satellites has connected the world with low cost internet coverage. These are from Starlink's company page, and the system is clearly being marketed to users who are not currently being served by other telecom providers. Rural broadband for $120 per month, almost anywhere in the world. Here is Rome with Starlink, Starlink for boats, Starlink for airlines and private jets, Starlink for government. It's easy to set up according to this photo here where looks like the guy set up their vehicle and kitchen and tent and she's in charge of getting the Starlink going and her clothes and hands aren't even dirty. So the Starlink system is up and running and has thousands of satellites in orbit with 2.7 million customers across 75 countries. And the system is now paying for itself with free cash flow estimated at $600 million for the year. Here's how Starlink did it, according to analysts, a high degree of vertical integration. Vertical integration is a degree to which a company produces everything it needs in-house. Number two, Starlink is designed for manufacturing cheaply. And three, they're organized to do it in high volume. Let's observe right away that these are three areas in which Chinese companies also excel. And Starlink is doing them so well that they have more or less put the European space agencies out of business. Airbus just laid off 2,500 people in its space division and says that they cannot compete against SpaceX. SpaceX has far more advanced technology compared to Europe. Politico and Spectator study the problems Europe has had up against SpaceX and they did good analyses and the links are below. Here's the part on SpaceX's money though. TechCrunch and Bloomberg report that SpaceX will earn $3 billion in 2024 on $15 billion in revenues. This means that SpaceX and Starlink are now generating large profits, which in turn will fund more innovation and more launches. It goes beyond all that though. Elon Musk's success with Starlink is disruptive in lots of other ways. European regulators earlier this month wrote to US officials and complained that Starlink was operating outside its prescribed frequency bands and that this is causing communications problems with Europe's cellular service carriers. Spurious emissions, as they're called, are causing interference with users on other platforms there in Europe. The second issue is one of industry standard. If Starlink becomes the default service provider for maritime and aviation and search and rescue and government, and for anyone else not living nearby cell towers or broadband providers, it will be very difficult for competing companies or standards to dislodge Starlink later. You're a shipping company or an airline or a search and rescue operation and you've been a Starlink customer for years, you're not likely to switch, even if it costs less, because it's just too risky if something goes wrong in your communications. So Starlink for now is the platform for all these users. The third question involves what Elon Musk might be up to with his purchase of Twitter, which he immediately renamed X, by the way. It would not be a complex technological challenge to bundle SpaceX and X, Twitter I mean, to be a dominant global search and mapping engine, as well as a news and information and communications portal. The final issue is one we're seeing play out right now in Ukraine. Starlink is such a powerful and such a comprehensive system that the military applications for it are obvious, and therefore so are the follow-up questions from that. What happens, for example, if a war is going on between two Starlink government customers? Can Starlink, which is a US company, be told by American regulators or military officers to turn off service somewhere? Any one of those reasons, let alone all of them, would serve as a strong motivator for China to catch up and to build their own constellations of satellites in low Earth orbit. This infographic is from Statistic and Zero Hedge, 
and shows where everyone stands now in the satellite space race. Chenfen is China's most ambitious project to put at least 15,000 satellites into orbit. SSST is the company leading the effort for that system. They've deployed 18 so far, so a long way to go. Starlink is about halfway to its goal of 12,000. Geely is another Chinese company with 30 in operation out of 6,000 planned. Amazon plans to build a system and has some prototypes that have worked, but they've also had some rocket production problems. And there's Europe on the board with fewer than 10% of what Starlink's got, even though they started first. The key differentiator, what has driven the success of SpaceX is their use of reusable rockets. Being able to use the rockets over and over again drives down the cost of launches. Falcon rockets are the ones developed by SpaceX, and their Falcon 9 is now the most commonly used rocket in the world. SpaceX basically has a monopoly on launches now, and that includes the Starlink satellites. The metric that the industry uses is cost per kilogram. How much does it cost to launch a kilogram of payload into orbit? And Falcon's payload launch cost is dropping towards zero. This is reusable rockets again, and a company organization at SpaceX with a very high level of vertical integration and manufacturing efficiency. In order to catch SpaceX, China needs to do what Europe did not do or could not, which is figure out how to build reusable rockets. So Chinese companies are doubling down on those efforts. There are two companies we have found who've recently announced progress there. The first, land space technology was profiled in space and defense. They're out of Beijing and have successfully tested vertical takeoffs and landings of their vehicle. This part is important. China's government is encouraging public and private companies to develop reusable rockets. This is a common top-down strategy here in China across all industries. The central government provides funding and resources for dozens of companies to tackle a problem, in this case, the design and mass production of reusable rockets. Second company is here, written up on space.com, and that company is CAS Space. Their rocket has a payload of eight tons, designed for LEO satellite constellations and cargo flights. There are no doubt other companies, perhaps many other companies, that are doing the same research here. China's spending on space programs already exceeds what the whole of the European Union spends. And remember again that everything here just costs a lot less. The technology just costs less here. It costs a lot less money to hire aerospace engineers in China than the United States or Europe. So it seems like the United States has a huge spending advantage, and that implies that we'll just stay ahead. But that also ignores how much value is generated from that spending here. That said, the fact that SpaceX and Starlink are already making big profits that is critically important. The system is paying for itself right now. SpaceX is already halfway to blanketing the world with coverage, and SpaceX is far ahead on the technology that gets the satellites up into orbit to begin with. They're also far ahead on commercializing the system, for now at least. This is Thousand Island Lake in Zhejiang province. Be good.